All right, we're going to talk today about my status bar in DWM. There are a couple things that make it different from most DWM status bars. Usually what you have is you have this script that's constantly running in the background, maybe running a bunch of subscripts um, every couple of seconds. I think that's usually the way that people, I mean, that's the way I used to do it on DWM. Um, but nowadays there are a couple programs you can use. The one that I use is uh, a fork of DWM blocks. You can get it on GitHub. I'll show you what mine does. Um, so anyway, just right off the bat, you can see, first off, we have color characters. That's not a status bar thing. That's a DWM thing. Um, I did a video on how to do that a bit ago. Um, but my status bar modules are actually clickable, so you can right-click on them. This is actually exactly, here's one thing to note. This is not like a totally new thing. If you've been on my channel, you'll know that, of course, I had an i3 blocks build. And I took all of the scripts from that and put them in this. So... You know, it's not like I rewrote anything. I just sort of ported them over to a program. And there are a couple other things I've added on, right? So I can right click on them. Uh, usually when I left click, it'll bring up a corresponding program. So here's my volume control. Um, here's the weather report. You got precipitation chance, daily high and, uh, or daily low and daily high. Click on that. It gives you a little weather report from, uh, what is it? WTTR.in. Um, and I even added these a, a couple, or I guess yesterday, I was a little bored. Usually what I do when I'm bored is I write like a status bar module. If I'm not doing something uh, one day, you can look at my Git history and see all the days that I work on my status bar. That basically means a day I don't have anything to do. Um, so for example, here's like the price of Bitcoin. You can click on it and it will you know, show you this sort of, uh, this is like the past seven days of Bitcoin, stuff like that. Um, so all of it's clickable now. This of course is something you have to patch into DWM and DWM blocks, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and I also have, um, let's see, I, I guess I have music as well. Uh, I don't know, let's just click on something. So this should pop up. Notice that like uh, my status bar is actually really big right now because you know I wanted to make it a little big for, or like the text is big. I wanted to make it visible for the video. But um, anyway, so there are probably three things, I guess, that are notable about my DWM blocks build. Um, the first thing, is that you know each of the modules is an individual script, and as I said, that's actually taken um, you know from the scripts that I made for my i3 blocks. So if you want to get these, they're on my GitHub. Uh, you can check them out. But you got different things for you know Newsboat uh, upgrades. This thing here, that 11 package thing, that means there are 11 packages I can upgrade. Stuff like that. Um, uh, this is the price module. I, I have two actually. For cryptocurrencies, there's one I was using earlier where you just manually state all the cryptocurrencies you want and it updates them and stuff like that. But uh, now I do this one where you can individually click on each of the ones. You have to put them all individually in your config. But um, one other thing I have is if I shift click on any of these, it'll actually bring up the actual status bar script. So it's nice if you want to tinker with something uh, or some of them have variables you can change. So let's say this... Uh, Let's say I click on the weather script. Um, here's my current location or approximate location. Uh, let's say I want to change that. Let's say I'm in Atlanta or something like that. You know, I can just say Atlanta, re have it rerun or something like that. Now it's going to check for that. Um, so you, I don't know. I, I sort of like it being easy to modify. So shift, I shift click on the, all these to change them. And if I shift right click on them, it actually brings up the config file for DWM blocks. This is all it looks like. And notice, um, basically what you do is uh, you have the name of the program you're running or the script that you're running, uh, how quickly it updates, and then the update signal you send it. Now, this is the important thing. This is the other thing unique about DWM blocks. This is the reason I use DWM blocks as opposed to another program, because usually... Uh, I think when you first start using DWM, and I was I did the same thing here. Usually, what you do is you have this little loop script that every couple seconds runs an xset root command, um, and that's that can be sort of a pain because it will um, you know it might run it, the subscripts every you know let's say if you update it every two seconds, it might be running those scripts every two seconds. Okay, the nice thing about DWM blocks is that instead you can have scripts, let's say for example, like my volume script, it updates, you give it zero for how frequently you want it to update, that means it never updates. So instead, I mean obviously if I increase my volume here, if I press my keybinds to change it, it still is changing, so what's going on? Here's what you do, um, instead of the blocks command constantly updating volume, like checking to see if it updates every second, 
I just have a um, a, a P kill command or a kill command signal to DWM blocks. It signals, you know, uh, the signal 10. It says, okay, I've just changed the volume, so update the volume module. So these modules, uh, you know, volume, uh, music, they only update when you know, it's a relevant update. It's not like it's uh, checking every second to see uh, manually if it's been updated. So there's some, you know, there's some, the ones with zero here for their update intervals, uh, the, like volume, uh, the help icon doesn't even need updating, uh, other stuff like that. Those only change when I signal to them. And everything else, like let's say the clock, the clock updates automatically every 60 seconds, okay? Because I want it to be, you know, I, I don't need it running every five seconds. I mean, I really just care about minutes. So, uh, okay, that's that. And uh, so for each of these modules, you assign it a different signal, okay? So, you know, 18, 14, here's 20, 21, 22. Um, and all of these for my build, now the, the other interesting, so I said you got individual scripts, that's one uh, unique thing. Second thing that I like about DWM blocks, why I use it, the other unique thing is the ability to not have to, you know, you can signal to update these different programs. Uh, the other thing is uh, the clickable stuff, uh, as I mentioned before. And one thing that the clickable modules actually need is they all need different update signals. Otherwise, DWM blocks gets confused. Now I should say, um, uh, I actually got emailed by this guy, Daniel, who, you know, were, you know, was like, you should check this out. It might work for your purposes. Uh, and he was very receptive to my sort of, uh, you know, figuring it out and stuff like that, adding it in. Um, so that patch is now on the Suckless website if you want to check that out. Um, anyway, so to actually signal a change to it, I actually have it written here um, on GitHub. And I have the GitLab for it pulled up and my personal Git whatever. I, I don't know. I put everything up on three sites. Just because why not? Just in case, I don't know, GitHub gets destroyed because I don't trust them. Um, but anyway, this is how it looks. So let's say, um, you know, you have the volume module and you have it set to signal number 10. Well, you can just sig, this is the command you run. You signal 10 to DWM blocks. You could also kill um, 44. You just add, take the number and add 34 to it. And this command is actually a little faster, uh, but I, I, I don't exactly, there's some wonky things that I don't really know about the command. Every once in a while it does something I don't expect. Um, so anyway, that, that's the nice thing about DWM blocks. Um, so it has, so for those of you who are using i3 blocks, it's nice because, I mean, I basically just ported over all my scripts. I just put them in this config file and that was it. Like that's all you have to do. Um, and the nice thing is you can add in extra stuff. Oh, I, I probably should say DWM specifically. Um, you do have to, when you add in this little clickable module, um, thing you do have to make some changes in your like there's a patch for DWM too specifically um, you also want to go down into the buttons uh, area and basically what you, what's going on here is uh, is this no um, these right here it basically says okay when I click the status bar with button one so left click here's what you do you signal the DWM blocks you know one or something like that, or specifically it gives, um, let's open up the scripts so you actually know how these are working. Uh, so let's say I open up, um, you know, the cryptocurrency price module, okay? Um, so uh, whenever you click on it, let's say you um, signal, you know, let's say button one, I have it signal one, okay? That is going to, basically set the value of block button equal to one, okay? So it's gonna run this command, it's gonna run where I, uh, you know, we'll see what happens if I click on it, it brings up the chart showing bit current, you know, bit currency prices, Bitcoin prices. Um, so basically you can say like any kind of mouse operation, any kind of uh, interaction here I have for different buttons, including scrolling, or, or I don't know, yeah, I guess I have scrolling, uh, it'll send a command or some kind of, uh, you know, block button variable uh, to the script and it will run. And notice I do have a shift clicked right here. So that's what those are for. Um, anyway, so that that's generally how it works. Uh, I encourage you to check it out because I, I feel like before I was, I've been using DWM blocks for, I don't know, maybe six, eight months or something like that. And I've really enjoyed it. Before that, I was never really happy with, like DWM status bar systems or like wrapper scripts and stuff like this. But this is really nice just because it doesn't have to update all the time. You can signal to it. Uh, it just looks good. You can click on it. That's, that's something really unique. 
Um, so anyway, check them out. Check out my build, the patches, or the patches on sucklist.org. Uh, see you guys next time.